Hi. It is a pleasure to be at this conference. Thank you very much, Angel, for inviting me. I'm very proud to be there, even remotely. Uh, this is the session on uh, transhumanism, longevity, and futurism. And my topic is longevity. I will speak about the science of longevity, a little bit of the ethics of longevity, its social implications, and its normative aspects. I have about 10 minutes, so I will have to run very fast. So let me just switch to slide share. Okay. So my subject is science, ethics, and public policy of longevity research. What does it mean? Simply, is it feasible? Is extended longevity feasible? Can we achieve it? Is it desirable? Do we want it if it is feasible? And if it is possible and if it is desirable, what do we have to do about it? What do we have to do to get it? So first about the feasibility. The first thing, if you want to achieve health and longevity, you have to tackle the thing that shortens our life and uh, brings about most of our mortality and morbidity, which is aging, the degenerative aging process. Uh, mostly aging is not uh, considered a uh, risk factor of disease, but in fact aging is the underlying risk factor for all diseases, all aging related diseases. And if we wanted to combat this disease, we have to tackle aging. Is it possible to tackle aging? Can we do something about it? Yes, of course. There is a set of aging processes, such as inflammation, chronic inflammation, or inflammation, cross-linkage, demineralization, uh, somatic mutations that cause aging, and there are a set of interventions, potential interventions that can tackle these problems, such as anti-inflammatory medications, enzymatic hydrolysis, DNA repair mechanisms, so, in principle, yes, it is possible to counter aging and extend healthy life, but most of this research is still in the stage of basic science, and in order to uh, bring into the stage of applied science, much more research and much more investment and effort are needed. So, what are our co uh, causes of hope? First of all, the life expectancy does increase, and there is no ceiling, no limit to this increase. Technologies developed by medical technologies in principle, there is no biological limit to uh, to the lifespan, as we can see that in nature there are non-aging life forms. So there is no law in nature that says that uh, any organism has to uh, die at a certain stage. There are important advances in experimental life extension. Even if you look at history, we see a much uh, source of optimism. For example, we see that the actual scientific pursuit of healthy longevity started about 100 years ago with uh, the uh, research of Elie Mechnikov, Charles Edward Brown Sicar. Of course, people searched for life extension from time immemorial, but the actual scientific theory in practice started about 100 years ago, and already we see considerable advances. If before matching, if we didn't know what uh, immune cells are, now we begin to synthesize them synthetically. In this sense, we have to mention uh, Bulgaria. Actually, matching of theory of uh, probiotic diets originated uh, or was inspired by Bulgarian traditional diet. And also, one of the earliest studies of centenarians started in Bulgaria in uh, 1929 uh, by uh, Dmitry Mikhaikov. Uh, that's the earliest study I could find on centenarians. Uh, and I uh, hope the golden age will return, but that will be a subject of another presentation in this conference. Of course, in this history, uh, there are some erroneous ways, uh, some uh, some setbacks, but uh, we shouldn't despise them. Things like, uh, you know, transplantation of sex glands and uh, uh, operation on sex glands, but uh, we should see them as uh, initial steps in the long research road for the future. After the war, uh, medical technology advanced greatly. 
On the one hand, there appeared means to uh, combat pathogens from antibiotics to antioxidants. On the other hand, they appeared means to replace the worn out tissues and organs by bionic means or by biological transplants from head to toe. And indeed, both heads and toes were replaced in the 1950s and 1960s. Head was transplanted in a monkey in uh, 1964 by the American William Wright and in a dog by in 1956 by the Russian Vladimir Demikhov. Uh, and these studies uh, inspired the hope that uh, thanks to such replacements, virtually all worn out uh, parts of the human body can be uh, can be replaced and thus uh, human aging can be countered and life prolonged. Now there are advances in uh, genetic methods of life extension, for example, various genes uh, associated with longevity can be enhanced or overexpressed and various genes associated with shorter lifespan can be suppressed. Of course, we have to look at the whole picture on the epigenetics, on the actual regulation of various genes, but still there is a proof of principle that by genetic manipulation, uh, the lifespan can be improved. There is a wide range of there is a wide range of uh, geroprotective substances, so-called, for example, uh, rapamycin and uh, metformin, that were shown uh, to improve the lifespan in animal models. And now the hope is to translate these studies into humans. Uh, the intervention now reached nano levels. Uh, there are particles to uh, eliminate uh, cancerous cells and even uh, senescent uh, cells. On the other hand, so there are uh, nanoparticles that can supply uh, oxygen, deficient oxygen. This is a very important development, as uh, let's say 100% of uh, causes of death are due to a lack of oxygen supply. So, of course, these studies are very, very promising. In the regenerative medicine, uh, sorry, uh, first uh, there is the SENSE approach, strategies for engineered negligible senescence where on the one hand uh, we can eliminate the sources of damage, on the other we can add the deficient parts such as lost cells or backup uh, mutant mitochondria in the, in the nucleus. The great advances in regenerative medicine, on the one hand uh, there are ways to eliminate senescent cells which bring about a greater turnover of cells and uh, a greater re re renovation. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are means to uh, to build organs and tissues from the outside uh, by such means as scaffolding, uh, bioreactors, tissue printing. So all these uh, means again reinforce our hope that uh, it may be possible to eliminate the worn out old tissues and replace them with with new and uh, regenerated tissues. Uh, of course, there is the replacements can be done also by artificial means, by uh, by prosthetics, by bionic means. There is much advance in that as well. Uh, all those means are rather mechanistic and uh, reductionist, uh, basically looking at the human body as a machine, replacing its parts, eliminating the the worn out parts by by new ones. But there are the gold old holistic ways to uh, improve uh, health and longevity, such as uh, rest, meditation, natural and uh, modest nutrition, exercise, some more novel means like electromagnetic stimulation. So as a proof of principle, we can see that yes, it is absolutely possible to extend healthy lifespan. Yet, uh, in order to bring this research to wide clinical practice, much more investment and effort will be needed. But do we want it? If it is possible, do we actually want to extend our life? And the answer is unequivocally yes, yes, we want it. Uh, and why? Simply because we want to live. There is no distinction between the will to life and the will, uh, will to life extension. And it was said by many philosophers, for example, by uh, such philosophers as Herbert Spencer, who said that legislative legislation conductive to increase longevity uh, uh, would uh, be praiseworthy on the optimistic view. And also uh, some thinkers from our area, from the Middle East, such as uh, Maimonides, also some uh, Persian and Arabic speaking, uh, speaking uh, thinkers, all agree uh, in one thing, that uh, yes, human life should be prolonged, 
his life is an absolute value. But uh, some people raise uh, uh, practical consideration, uh, perhaps uh, extending longevity uh, will be accompanied by uh, some uh, adverse effects on the society. No, actually, uh, human longevity is correlated with most uh, human values, with most of the things that we, uh, that we appreciate, such as education, income. Uh, it is even an indispensable part of the uh, human development index. It is correlated with intellectual activity, with prosperity. It is even an indicator of economic uh, growth and equality. Uh, some people worry that extended longevity will cause boredom and, uh, and stagnation. Actually, no, the opposite may be the case. Maybe extended longevity or likely extended longevity will uh, improve our ability to learn and to, in order to survive, actually have to change to adapt to new, to new circumstances. Uh, a lot of people worry that uh, life uh, quality will be impaired uh, with, in, uh, with enhancing life quantity. Actually, we can see examples that life quality and life quantity go hand in hand. For example, if a machine uh, is in good working order, it also runs long, and we can see in the centenarians that they both live long and uh, retain their mental and physical abilities until the very end. Uh, so, uh, we can uh, counter the, uh, the objections to life extension simply by, uh, by saying that uh, life is an absolute value and that uh, uh, even if there be some uh, diminishment of resources, we should, should still uh, pursue it because uh, uh, even if people will be poor, they will live longer. But in fact, uh, uh, we should not expect a shortage of resources, even with the current means, even with the means uh, of agricultural production of the 1960s, it was possible to feed 45 billion people. Uh, and now uh, the agricultural productivity only increased. So we shouldn't worry about overpopulation. Actually, overpopulation is, uh, is rather a problem of uh, countries with low life expectancy, uh, where people overcompensate for increasing uh, mortality by increasing uh, uh, birth rates so if we want to actually combat overpopulation and improve the living standard also the developing countries want to extend healthy longevity want to extend uh, the life expectancy okay so if uh, if healthy longevity is a good thing and if it is possible to achieve what should we do about it if something is good and if something is possible should we actively pursue it or should we just sit and wait until it falls in our lap? Uh, I think Riz tells us that uh, we should pursue it, but uh, how, how do we do this? How do we go about it? Clearly, some program uh, for this pursuit is needed. Such a program would include both the means of extending health and longevity from the outside, uh, such as genetic technologies, uh, or improving a healthy lifestyle, nutrition, exercise, rest, all the known things, environmental technologies, but also uh, that would include the intervention from the inside, the regenerative medicine, genetic therapy, gel protectors, nanomedicine, all the things that we briefly surveyed here. And even more importantly, the entire public attitude to these interventions has to change. The society has to set to itself the goal of life extension, of healthy life extension, very clearly, very openly, and start to discussing it, start to plan how to achieve it. And this is uh, uh, a task for the wide public, uh, for public discussion. This is also a task for governments. Uh, uh, we have to make a plan. Uh, what uh, what uh, directions should we prioritize? Who pays for these developments? How can they be uh, universally distributed? Uh, we have to make this a topic of uh, wide public and, uh, and political even uh, discourse. Uh, this discussion just started, so it is very early uh, to give some specific recommendations. Seems still some preliminary recommendations could include increased funding, incentives, and coordination or institutional support for the academic, commercial, and public organization and well involved in the research and development uh, 
specifically dedicated to extending health longevity and ameliorating degenerative aging processes. Uh, there are more specific recommendations. Uh, for example, you're welcome to read our article, The Critical Need to Promote Research of Aging, that was published in uh, the Journal of Our Society, uh, International Journal of Aging and Disease. And once again, it focuses on funding, increasing funding for this research, incentives such as uh, improved status of this research, and institutional support, such as uh, increasing education on the subject, introducing courses on the subject, uh, making the subject into a, uh, a global uh, or national priority that it deserves. And there are things that every one of us can do. Uh, educate uh, him herself about this research, study the relevant fields such as biogerontology, geriatrics, and adjacent fields because all those fields can be directed to uh, healthy life extension. Join others, there are now many groups. Uh, participate, uh, participate in research, volunteer, donate to, to the organizations that are involved in this kind of research and development. Lobby, make sure that this uh, becomes a, a topic of public discussion, of political support. And most importantly, be healthy, live long, uh, uh, so uh, there'll be a better chance for us to uh, to survive to the time when uh, uh, effective technologies are available. And of course, every improvement of, in public uh, awareness is, is beneficial, and uh, the actions like uh, like today's action or, uh, or the International Day of Older Persons or the International Longevity Day that we'll be promoting for October 1, uh, will be also very beneficial. It, it will help to bring this uh, topic to public agenda. And thank you very much uh, for your attention. I stop sharing. And uh, once again, it was a pleasure to be there. I hope uh, to answer any questions that may arise. Thank you.